okay so our bl and del layer uh, for this example method at least are complete and now we uh, go and add new project and this should be our wcf i service kind of service level projects so this should again go to server side customer service Okay, it should be it's, it's a WCF project it is not a class library we go to WCF and say WCF library right so now the system will generate a WCF project with these two de default interfaces and this one default interface which is iService1 and two methods get data and get data using data contract so we don't need these two at all we can get rid of these classes okay now we need to implement we say add new class customer service class because this class will implement I customer. I customer is our public interface. If you remember, it should be into our public interfaces. I customer, because this interface is common between server side and client side. So client side implement and exposes this interface. Sorry, the server side implement and exposes this interface over WCF layer, and client side consumes the service using this interface. So, I customer and this should be public class now we need to add the reference of public interfaces into this project public interfaces or shift f10 to add the using statement okay now we can implement this interface implement interface for customers and we get this implementation method and obviously we need to now refer this uh, business object project as well so business object okay and now again i need to delegate this call to be a layer so i should have i customer bl provider bl provider and over here i will just delegate this call to bl provider okay now this i customer bl provider is where it's in here i customer service common interfaces so i will refer this project here as well customer services server common interfaces call shift f10 and here it goes and now in the method i will simply say bl provider dot get customers return Okay, now again I have achieved the same level of isolation between WCF layer and the BL layer. BL layer doesn't directly maintain any reference to the uh, BL implementation. In fact, it works on the interface. So, we have to initialize this object and at the initialization time we can decide which BL uh, which customer BL provider implementation we are going to initialize if we have more than one like one for testing purposes one for real thing then based on a certain flag we can initialize okay. so if we write a constructor to this class customer services and based on some 
settings because this this WCF is the service level uh, project and if we have some settings here or we can get some settings from somewhere and based on those settings we can decide which BL layer to initialize so over here we can say initialize BL object based on settings or config okay we can have a test implementation or we can have a real implementation so we can have say if something then new test bl provider else is our this one bl provider which is our real bl provider okay so i will comment these lines they were just to give you a bit of explanation how can we initialize different uh, implementations so now to access customer bl provider we need to add a reference to the bl provider then using customer bl okay now we need to pass i customer dal provider here as well so this is uh, the beauty like uh, from here when we are actually initializing the business layer we have the full control on the business layer like which dal it will use so if we are providing for example in here if we were going to create it test bl provider we could have passed a test dal provider as well so i say i customer dal provider and in over here i could have passed maybe some test dal provider so test customer dal provider so this would be like test customer dal provider so if if based on a certain settings we want to um, we want to do our testing based on certain test mocks or certain mocks on these projects which we know will always return these values for these methods and uh, then we want to test the whole system so we just initialize for based on that flag and all these projects will be initialized as kind of test projects and if we are in the real mode then we will actually initialize these uh, real projects so no to access this customer dal provider we need the reference from the dal here as well okay customer dal provider function 10 okay now we know this constructor takes the connection string as well so whoever is actually consuming the bl can get the settings of uh, the connection string or database so this is like we will we will have full control from the top most layer so over here our topmost layer is wcf layer and from wcf layer we can configure and apply all the settings that we want so if we say here we say initialize some setting object or interface and get necessary settings for dal and bl and then pass the settings to dal and pl okay so for example we have something so we know this is our connection string and uh, our uh, database timeout is 300 so we can pass it here to our dal so dal is initialized based on our real settings and in this case our dal should be initialized based on our 
see test connection string and three hundred. So we can pass our test configuration while we are dealing with the test initialization, and we can pass the real live connection string while we are initializing into the real mode. So this is the advantage that we can gain if we work on totally based on the interface uh, interfaces and we do not uh, um, we do not work on the implementation we work on the interfaces okay so i will comment these lines again because it was just to give the idea okay so now we have initialized the dell provider and then based on this dial provider we have initialized the bl provider and then service layer will use this bl provider to delegate all the calls to the bl okay now we have uh, implemented our wcf layer as well for this uh, example one method now let's go to the configuration file and we have to uh, modify the configuration file app.config for uh, our WCF settings so first of all we get rid of uh, this design time so I say 8085 localhost 8085 and design time addresses I can say my company services and then after that this should be the base address and if I want to add another address, I can simply add as many base addresses as I want. So net dot TCP localhost and the port I can give 9090 my company services. And then in the endpoint here, endpoint I can I have to specify ABC of the WCF A is for address B for binding and C for contract so whatever address either I write the full address here into the endpoint node or I write a relevant address which is re, which will be concatenated to this base address so I say customer service so then the service URL will become like HTTP localhost 8085 my company services slash customer service and it is exposed on WCF HTTP binding you want to add more you can add here customer services net TCP binding and our contract is customer WCF and it should be interface and it's not customer WCF it is this one which is public interfaces because we are going to expose this public interfaces so its namespace should come here and interface name should be here so we need to mention the fully qualified interface name including the namespace plus the interface name okay and service name is the implementation class name okay now we don't have any class like service one the class that implements this interface is customer service so customer service its namespace is customer wcf which i think is correct and then class is customer service okay so we have mentioned our class name as a service name then we have specified base addresses then we have specified two endpoints here is a mistake we missed this one and then we have exposed metadata as well so that uh, the client can see the visual document based on this service okay so everything looks fine and now we can try to run or host our service 
right so yes for hosting or for running the service let's use the default option and in de by default if we have a wcf project then there is a tab into settings which is wcf options and by default this checkbox is checked say start wcf service host when debugging another project in the same allocated solution so if we run any so if we debug any of the project from this solution visual studio will automatically host this service into wcf service host which is by default provided by the uh, this uh, visual studio or uh, i can say and go and i can say debug so when i will say debug it will host this wcf into the host as you see here so this is the wcf service host this service is hosted customer wcf plus customer service started and this is the metadata address so, okay and this service is accessible at this metadata is accessible at this address service status is started and after starting the after hosting the service visual studio then launches this wcf test client and this test client uh, what it does it simply goes to this service uh, max url http localhost 885 my company services slash max it gets the vis visitor document or metadata details of this service and then parses that detail and list all the available methods and interfaces here so as you can see we exposed our service of two bindings aws http binding and net http binding and the same method is available on both of these bindings so we can expose any of um, these methods so because this method doesn't take any parameter so we don't need to provide any parameter here if it takes any parameter it it lists all the input parameters as a request list and then all the response comes here so i can say invoke and when i say invoke yes so first of all the constructor of the wcf service class which is customer service class implementing this interface which is exposed over wcf this constructor is this constructor is invoked and in the constructor we have the control which bl to initialize which dal to initialize which settings to use so based on any configuration or setting we can initialize uh, our bl and dal in a test mode or live mode or if you have any other mode or any other configuration you can initialize it here so if i go inside dal so yes so you see it is getting the connection string and db timeout and setting to its local variable now dal is initialized now bl will be initialized to initialize the bl we need to provide the dal ourselves because business layer is unaware of the dal it doesn't know which dal to use so we have to provide the dal we initialize the dal according to Uh, our own requirements and then pass the dial and say bl you use this dial so bl will use the provided dial will delegate all the calls to the provided dial and uh, what it does it simply gets this implementation and stores this reference to this dial provider and this dial provider is just interface based object so it's not a class based okay now the initialization is done and the method get all customer is invoked so now this is the wcf and wcf will delegate this call to the bl provider and here we comes to the customer bl provider get all customer and it doesn't do anything it delegates this call to the dal and now dal is what we initialized so this is the dal that we initialized and passed to the bl layer so the call will go to our dal and in here i'm simply adding two elements to the list and returning this list call came back to the bl from the dal bl returned to the service and service will return to the client so where is test client okay all right so we because we're debugging so the timeout reached so the call did not return in the expected timeout so okay no i did not go for debug and i got the result back so we can see two members in the list and we got the result back so our service is working okay so i think we have uh, done the server side because we tested our service it's returning the results uh, now let's start on the client side and to start on the client side i would say let's uh, start a new visual studio 
so that we start a new solution and uh, the client side solution only contain the client side project so we have a clear separation of our server side projects and the client side projects so we create a new project other project types real studio solutions and we say customer services client and the folder for this project should be client and we say it's a windows app ui customer services win app ui uh, you can give a meaningful name based on your project okay everything is fine so yes create the solution and now within this solution let's add, 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 add. okay on the client side we we should have actually more than one layers uh, either we follow the MVVM pattern or MVC or any other if you don't follow any pattern at least there should be a controller kind of layer which is responsible for the initialization of uh, um, server side and uh, which can send create connections send uh, request to the server and get the results back and then pass those results to the UI but for simplicity uh, here I will simply make a new project one project and we will just have a separate class and that class uh, you can um, then move to a separate project or follow the MVVM or MVC or whichever pattern you want maybe I should do another video to explain what MVVM pattern is but MVVM pattern is usually used with uh, um, Silverlight or WPF uh, framework okay so we are going to do here is windows form based application and its project is customer service client okay i think we have done uh, something wrong we should have created this solution somewhere else so let me fix it Cancel this and close this and go to the folders. Clients, clients may not be well. Okay, so this solution should not be here. project solution and it's customer services client and the solution should go simply to this client folder okay and then the project should go to the right place new project windows form based application and we can say customer services win app ui and this one should go to its right folder client uh, win app ui <coughs> okay it's a windows form based application <coughs> So we have a form and say based on this button click we invoke certain method and as I said I will not go through different layers I will simply make another class Uh, I can say customer service controller or proxy so this class is now responsible of, for the initialization of
public select initialize and uh, and in here we can pass uh, maybe server URI Okay, so we call the initialize method on this uh, proxy class and then we uh, have one public property and this property should return i customer. So say it's, it's customer service and It should return this customer. Now this i customer is the same interface which is implemented by the server side. Now we refer the same project and 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 we bring that project to the solution first. Add existing project and that existing project is into customer services source code common public interfaces okay similarly we will need uh, uh, business objects as well so we add that project to our solution business objects from the common okay and now we refer these projects in here so we refer both of these projects in here so i customer all shift f10 using customer service public interfaces okay that's fine. So I will be get. Okay. So when this proxy class is initialized based on the service address, it will return i customer object and i customer then anybody who who know who has the reference to this proxy class and if it is initialized can call all the methods of the i customer. For example, in the over here we initialize, um, say we have a proxy class object, customer services proxy, service proxy, and we say customer service proxy dot initialize and over here we can get the URL from its uh, settings so properties dot settings dot default dot uh, server URI okay now we can define the server URI into the settings of this application And we can say user or application level settings wherever and our service URI is we can get from here from this app settings and 
Rask customer service. Okay, so this is our customer URI. This initialize method should return the object. So we keep the proxy object into our form class or wherever it is being used and when we need to invoke any method we say service proxy dot customer service and here we get all the methods that this interface implements. So we say get all customers and uh, where is our form and if we have some kind of Control here, we can add some data control. We should look for some controls under the data section. So, data grid view, yes, we can add a data grid view here. data grid v1 its name is data grid v1 and we can say data grid view one dot data source equals whatever is written from this service so this is our proxy which is initialized when the form is initialized and the uri is passed from the settings and uh, then once it is initialized, it returns us i customer over here in, in, in one of its property and on that property now we can invoke all the methods of that interface. This is one approach. Other approach is when we initialize the proxy, we straight away get i customer here and then we don't need to go like service proxy dot customer service. So we can straight away say um, i customer dot get all, customer service dot get all customers. So it's up to you whichever way you want to use but we need to do some stuff here because initialization is not yet complete okay we need to initialize here so we say ws http binding HTTP binding. Okay. Now again, I said this proxy class or controller class should not be part of the UI project. It should be into some common folder, but common folder of the client side. Like over here, we have some common folder, so that we have one project which is is responsible for the initialization of the server side for the proxy initialization and if we have more than one client and both both or more than two clients need to use this service they only refer to the common project and that common project provides the initialization and the interface to the service so logically we should take away this class from this project and move it to another common project and that common project should be responsible for all the initialization and that you can do in your project over here we can just continue so now to use this wsh3 binding i need to add the reference of system dot service model What's missing? WS HTTP binding. Yes, WS HTTP binding. S is capital as well. Then endpoint address. And over here I can pass server URI. In fact, we don't, maybe we don't need to store this server URI. Uh, 
has a property here i can straight away pass what i get and uh, now i need an object of channel factory okay now channel factory is a generic class so i need to pass my interface i customer okay and over here i need to pass the binding that i want to use ws HTTP binding and endpoint address so that channel factory is initialized based on the binding and the endpoint and once my channel factory is initialized I can call channel factory dot, on, dot create channel and this create channel should return me exactly the same interface that I want to work on Okay. In fact, we should initialize this object here. Okay, this is a very very basic code, but you might need to do some settings for this WS HTTP binding, like setting timeouts, and also if you want to pass larger objects, you need to uh, set some some of the attributes here as well, so that the larger objects, larger lists can be transferred. This is very very basic code. Okay, so when this proxy is initialized in the constructor, we get the URI, we initialize the binding, we initialize the endpoint address, we initialize the factory, and we call the create channel method of the factory, and this will return us this service object. Okay, and then we this can be used over here. Now, one point in this approach we need to note is, say we initialize this proxy object, and then we are storing this uh, i customer i communication uh, i communication object in here maybe after 2 3 minutes something goes wrong with the network and then this whole uh, connection is not available this connection might go to a faulted state so maybe first or two first few calls are successful but after that if channel goes to faulty state the, so the the method calls that are done after the uh, after the faulty state they will fail so we need to have a mechanism to constantly check what is the state of the channel if the state of the channel is faulted we reinitialize the proxy again so that is up to you you can do that that's very easy you can just um, have because you can get the event when the channel goes to faulted state and if the channel goes to faulted state you can reinitialize it so this way your connection to your service is always alive whenever it goes to faulted state you can reinitialize it and uh, you can also show on your client like the status to the server is connected or disconnected okay right uh, I think uh, it's done now so let's test but before we test we need to run our service or host our service for this example we will simply use the visual studio wcf host so if i run this it should host my service yes the service is hosted and in fact we don't need um, this client so we will invoke our own client so so i create the binding endpoint channel factory and okay my object is created you can see the transparent proxy is created and Okay, now if I press this button, it will go to this property which is the I customer transparent proxy and call this get all customer. And this call will go over the bar to the service over you on the WS HTTP binding. If there if we initialize our proxy object using NetTCP binding, it will go to the NetTCP binding. And again, what we can do here into the initialization of the proxy 
we can based on certain configuration we can say okay initialize the server on http or initialize the server on tcp ip so if we know the service is local we go tcp ip if we go if we know the service is remote we go ws http or if we go the service is asynchronous we go msm to bind so uh, this call will go to the service and you see you now this is the customer service and if I say F5 here and now this is the actual method which is being invoked and I am back to the client side and this is what I get from my service. So you see now I have I've made a client which can initialize the proxy object based on the binding from the configuration if you want to do it and uh, then it can make calls. Okay, the, this approach is a bit different than uh, usually the people do because most of the people they just add when they come to the client side they just add a service reference. So if you add a service reference and give the service URL here it will generate a proxy automatically and then you don't need to worry about this proxy. So if you are going to use that proxy you can simply uh, the wizard will generate a proxy and you can initialize that proxy in here you don't need to initialize this our own custom proxy here you can initialize a wizard generated proxy and call the methods on the wizard generated proxy but this approach i feel better because uh, first of all we we know the common things between the client and the server before the proxy is generated so if both sides like server side and client side are being developed on the same site or by the same team then or by even if by the different teams but if they know what are the contract between the client and the server what are the interfaces and the business objects then this approach will work well uh, the advantage of having this approach is like all the changes because during the development there are changes going on between the business objects and the interfaces as well maybe some new methods are added some parameters are changed removed or added so if we work on the proxy approach then every time a change happens we need to update the proxy and if the change happens and we don't know and we're still trying to call the service based on the old proxy we will end up with errors so this approach is better like if somebody is changing any if somebody adds any interface any new method to this interface into over here it will immediately uh, it will immediately be visible on this side because on this side we have referred the same project so it's the same thing i customer so it's it's kind of synchronized and common common code which is um, which is shared between client side and the server side and also uh, because over here we have only one proxy class and we can control it properly and through our settings if we want to go on multiple bindings like the client is intelligent enough to decide on its own like okay if I am in this settings I will initialize the WSHTTP binding if I am on this setting I will initialize the uh, net TCP binding that is easy and more manageable and more controllable over here as well but there are advantages of going to the proxy way as well because when we generate the proxy it adds the proxy class here and it generates all the configuration of the client side to this config file as well so we can setting we can control settings of the client like timeout settings or other settings all the settings of the WCF uh, on the client side through the config file but with this approach the drawback is like if we want to extend or change some settings we have to go here we have to change them by set, uh, by the code like if we want to change the timeout close timeout whatever is the by default if we want to change it i need to do in the code way not the configuration way so that's the drawback but it's up to you you can uh, choose to go to the proxy way or you can choose to go to this approach and other thing i want to say 
is like no at least it's clear like we know which projects are client side so this is a solution that when you open the client side opens although there are common projects which are accessed by both server and client side and this solution is the server side so when you open this solution you see all the server side and relevant projects regarding namespaces yes uh, i would say we keep the default namespaces so every project has its own namespace and uh, when we refer the project we just use the using statement to refer that namespace and this way we know okay which one is which which class belongs to which project and which namespace if we try to play with the namespaces like if somebody say no i want same namespace for all the um, server side classes then it will become complex to manage we don't know okay because the namespace will be same but the classes will exist in different projects so it might uh, not it might not be that much clear that we have at this stage we know okay same the assembly name is customer bl and namespace is customer bl and these are the classes that it contains so when we refer this project reference this project to another project we know what it, its namespace is so i would say i would recommend to use the default namespace and uh, uh, so in this uh, whole exercise we went through uh, the project anti architecture different layers and uh, how how can we uh, have have an organized folder structure and then different project side projects the common projects the server side projects and the client side projects and then the approach to write the code in a sequence way and also uh, the interfaces like uh, no you should be more clear with the term like program to an interface not to an implementation so our dal and bl are programmed to interfaces so we know we can now we can now control them there is lot of flexibility how do we initialize the whole thing from the service we can control which way we want to initialize our dal and bl and uh, it it would be good for testing purposes as well and for understanding and for managing the code as well so maybe in another video we can go and extend uh, all these uh, places where we did not do anything at the moment like in in here in another video maybe we can go through and see how can we uh, have our mock dal and uh, bl layers and uh, in test environment how can we initialize that and verify our results and if we have some test driven development done so while we run the test we during that running of a test we initialize our test interfaces test implementations and during the test when we execute the test we know okay oh yes my bl is initialized in the test environment so it should always return these two items or this value and in the test we can verify and make sure like yes uh, the result is as expected so the layers or everything is working but again this these things will only test some part of the functionality if for the real testing if, if for the real testing we have to go with the real things so we cannot really say like if we initialize the test interfaces the test implementation if the test implementations work fine everything will work fine no they can be they can using this approach we can test like yes the whole cycle works fine we go to a client and we from the server side we initialize everything based on a test and we see okay yes even if we don't have database we're getting the results so the whole whole cycle like from client to server server to bl everything is working and security we can test using this approach exception handling we can test using this approach but what when it comes to the real thing like the real dal and the real bl then yes the things have to be tested with the real dal and real bl as well okay